Hi all, Planetside Agent here. Uh, today I'm going to do a follow-on video to uh, the one I posted a few weeks ago, which I will put a link uh, to that one in case you haven't seen it yet or you came across this one first. But basically a follow-on to the video on a 45-year-old survival kit that I made when I was first in the Air Force. Uh, I, un I unboxed it or opened it up and showed you all the contents. So uh, I have a few follow-on things uh, to talk about with this one if I decide to rebuild it up. But uh, some things I would probably I would do different now, 45 years later, because I have access to uh, different things than uh, what I used to. So I'll just show you what I would do if I was going to rebuild this kit and upgrade it. And uh, But before I do uh, the upgrade stuff, slide this aside, just a, a follow-on when I was uh, finally took this thing apart, I don't know if you, if you saw the first one, I had these really grody <laughs> cubes here. I'll be throwing these away after this video. I only came on, hung on to them to do the second video. But these were bullion cubes. And that's the problem with bullion cubes is they, they, tend to, they tend to swell and disintegrate after time. I've had this even with newer uh, kits that I've made where I've had bullion cubes in there and they, they kind of disintegrate. I thought... I had these other packages that I thought were also bullion cubes, but I was wrong. So in this kit, I actually had six just regular bullion cubes. And then I realized that these were four, two packages of four sugar cubes, which is good to have a little sugar uh, in the survival situation. Go good with the tea or just to give you a little boost of energy. So anyway, that's what these other two ones, I didn't have all bullion cubes. <laughs> so it made sense after I thought about it. But anyway... So that's, uh, that was that. So now let me, yeah, made a mess. Uh, where's my, that's it, darn bullion cubes. And since we're on the subject of uh, messy bullion cubes, I'll show you what I'm going to do for an upgrade in all survival kits hereafter. I say, in a survival kit, it's good to have, you know, little things like sugar and things just to uh, give a little boost of energy and, and for morale if you're in a survival situation. So anyway... Uh, one thing uh, new on bullion cubes what I'm going to do, instead of using the cubes which, like I say, tend to draw moisture after a while and disintegrate uh, as I'm going to start using these little uh, Goya um, bullion packages because I think they'll seal better and they, they probably won't, uh, won't be as messy hopefully they'll last longer I, I don't know, time will tell I'll put one in this kit and get back to you in 45 years. <laughs> if I did, I'd, if that was the case, I'd probably be the world's oldest man. I don't think I'm going to make it that far. But anyway, so that's one upgrade on all my survival kits, and a lot I'm going to use this this bullion in it. The other thing you'd do is I'd probably also go with uh, packaged sugar instead of cubes because of the same thing. Hopefully... They would, uh, they're would they not going to draw moisture as bad. And I'd put these in the plastic bag anyway, so they last a little bit longer. So so that's an upgrade. And, uh, in fact, I do put this in all... I don't know if I put this in my last survival kits. Depends on the size, but anyway. Uh, another thing I like to add to survival kits, and I'd add to this one, and this is candy. Because it can give you a, a little uh, boost of energy... And it's also a morale builder. And um, I've thought and used different candy in the past, like little heart candies, like peppermint or butterscotch, that sort of thing. But uh, um, the trouble with those, again, they, they tend to get gooey and draw moisture after a while. And they're, they get kind of gunky in a uh, survival kit. Although, you know, sugar lasts forever and it wouldn't really be a problem. You could still eat it. But it just kind of makes a messy... A mess in your survival kit, might like the bullion cubes did in, in this kit. So, but I've decided I like these high chews because they they're small, they come sealed, they're tasty. They, you know, they'll fit. Might be able to fit one or two in a survival kit, depending on the size. So that's one other thing. Uh, tea bags. Now the original tea bags I used for the survival kit. I think mostly just to kind of save space because uh, you know you could get package like this in the past you know, pre, uh, sealed foil type packages. But at that time when I made this kit, I just used old Lipton tea bags. I rolled them up, you know, and they uh, they did store nice and 
nice and compact in the survival kit. But I think uh, probably for survival kits, I was just going to add tea bags. I tried to just slide one of these in here. I guess if I was really pressed for space, I could put one of uh, just take it out and roll it up like I did with the uh, the original survival kit here. Okay, now for a kind of fire starter. Um, I just put cotton balls, which we all know, or most of us know, that it's a, they're really excellent for fire starters, especially if you put uh, an accelerant on them like Vaseline. Um, while I'm on the subject here, one thing you might, I could add, now this kit I did, I had Band-Aids, but that was back about it. Some, some of my little mini first aid kits, I'll put the small packages of Neosporin, or I think if you could find... I have seen um, Vaseline come in little foil packages, like, uh, you know, the kind of ketchup and mustard kind of packaging that you get at the fast food stores. But Vaseline, that would be a good thing to throw in a survival kit. And then you could use that either for first aid purposes, or you could also smear it on something to use for an accelerant for fire starting. So that's a thought. But for all my uh, uh, current builds on survival kits and fire kits, uh, Instead of the cotton balls, I'm starting to use these. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, it just slipped my mind what these are called. I got it. Make, you know, it's really hard to do things when your mind's going. But uh, these little fire starters here, they, they work really great. You kind of spread them apart. They take a spark really quick from either a ferro rod or a match. And they burn for a long time. So they actually... Um, they really work well. They're they're small. They're compact, and uh, you can throw those in a in a survival kit and put as many as you can cram in there. So, but I always I think some of my newer kits, which I probably will do a video on later, um, you know, you can put two or three in there, which is get you going. So so that's an upgrade. Uh, another thing I would add, <laughs> if you saw my previous video, I had a bunch of uh, matches. Uh, waterproof matches rolled up in little pieces of foil which over time this stuff just kind of disintegrated which is weird but anyway uh, one thing I, I should have added I didn't think about it at the time I figured just strike it on a rock or something but you might be in an environment where that's not available so I really I think it's a good idea to, um, to put a striker so what I would do was I would rebuild this I would just cut of course a fresh striker off of, off of a box and add that to the kit to strike your matches on just as a backup. Oops, had to stop the video. The wife came in the garage. <laughs> uh, which, actually, in the meantime, I remember what these are called. Tinder Quicks. <laughs> there we go. They really were great. And the other thing is, yeah, for uh, I would put a striker in my kit. You know, I might even uh, add some of the newer, uh, um, what they call windproof matches in there, too. In fact, uh, I think I got some of those handy here in my little kit. Yeah, I call them stormproof matches or uh, windproof. They're the ones you guys have. You might have seen these. They're uh, they're really long. These are kind of falling apart because these were in my uh, backpacking day hike survival kit, so they've kind of taken a beating over time I've since we placed them with newer stuff. But anyway. Might throw a couple of those in a survival kit. But anyway, so I'd probably just go ahead and wrap these up small because you don't want the whole box. That that would, you know, obviously take up too much room. But you could slide a, the striker in the side really quite easily or, or in the top of the can or something. So anyway, that's another change I would make to uh, this particular kit. Um, the other thing I'd add would maybe be one or two nails because you, know, you might be able to use them for any number of things but the other thing I got to thinking about if you wanted to boil water in this can and that's one of the reasons you know I always like to have a can is you've got a water container now um, I don't know how well these would uh, how watertight these are I never did try it so anyway I assume it I'll, I'll, I'll assume it does but anyway if you want to hang it from a fire you could uh, use the nail with a rock to drive a hole and then you could uh, 
used the wire that was also in the kit to make a bale so you could hang it over a fire. So just a thought. You could use, you know, this kind of stuff. Any Anything you have in a survival situation is good to have. It's better than nothing. So anyway, and let's see. I think the last thing I was going to cover is I showed you this cool little uh, striker kit that I got from one of the uh, from one of the survival structures at the Air Force Survival School in uh, Fairchild Air Force Base in, in outside of Spokane, Washington. And I'll just show you again. It had a ferro rod in here and it had a they taken part of an old uh, hacksaw blade. He cut that down so it would fit in in here. So it was really kind of clever. That's why I bought it from him. So he's probably making beer money with it. But one of the things with this one over time, here's the ferro rod that was in it. You can see it's all disintegrated. Uh, or starting to disintegrate. And actually I had this problem once before. I bought one of the original metal matches way back when and I just had it in the bottom of my little uh, survival bag. It was, you know, I carried backpacking and day hiking, skiing, yada, yada. And eventually, one day, I was just, said, I, well, I better check, see what's in this thing. Maybe I, I need to replace some stuff. And um, it, uh, <laughs> it, had, it had completely disintegrated. I mean, completely. It was just dust in the bottom of the Ziploc bag that I had it in. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's something, you know, you need to check over time. So, anyway, I recently, I bought... Uh, some of these miniature ones online and I'm going to uh, this is just a hair bigger but I think I'll just widen this out a little bit and then uh, saw this off cut this off and then glue it back in then I'll have my little kit will be back uh, back to working condition again so the other thing that was on my mind I was going to discuss oh yes let me uh, let me pause and go get that the back. Um, the other thing was uh, water purification. Now, you used to get these little tablets. Uh, used to buy them all the time, little tablets. You put a tablet and uh, one or two in the quart of water and they would work. I forgot what it was called. Uh, but anyway, I think this was actually out of an Air Force survival kit or I, they gave it to us at uh, survival school. They had some old stuff. But anyway, um, I, I definitely would switch that up because I was trying to lighten and less bulk my survival kits, you know, get more bang for the buck. So let me go get those other tablets. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Go upstairs to my little box of survival items I used to build survival kits. Uh, what I got here, what I have been adding is these uh, catadine purification tablets. Uh, I don't know what their longevity on them is, but I guess anything's better than nothing. But... Uh, I've started to add these to some of my survival kits because uh, obviously probably I can't probably can't carry as many as as tablets were in this bottle but uh, if you're looking you know to get you know size wise keep things compact you always throw a few of these in there a little more compact so I've been throwing these in some of my smaller survival kits so that's that one the other thing to cover originally this kit uh, had a candle in it, and it was a uh, just a, a kind of a survival candle, outdoor candle that uh, also for small candle lanterns. Anyway, and then I uh, I wrapped my uh, some fishing line cord around it, which you know double duty worked really well. Uh, just another thought on uh, candles for survival kits. This one's kind of big if you're trying to keep things as small as possible for pocket carry sorts of things, hand weight. Um, there's other options I've, I've actually started using for uh, survival kits is uh, tea candles. You can pick up a, like a whole bag of these at the dollar store. So anyway, they're, uh, they're a little bit they're not nice and compact. You can get them in a lot of things, and they're cheap. So that's another another option to be using. Or I often thought also another option for candles, especially if you're looking for a smaller survival kit, like you're going to use a. Uh, come on, uh, one of these Altoid tin types. Something like this, you know, will fit in there nicely. 
So with this, although it will take up a lot more room, but if you're looking for space, so, you know, a birthday candle also works as a good uh, candle option. So let's see. Uh, oh, <laughs> I told you that uh, in the original kit, you, you use condoms for, for water bags because they're strong, they're light. Uh, although I notice a lot of survival kits and people now are using uh, plastic uh, zip bags, which, um, you know, those really weren't available back when I built this kit. So, and also they're going to hold, these are going to expand, obviously, with the volume of water. But you might be nice to put them in a container, maybe wrap them in a handkerchief or something to kind of protect them too. But anyway, you could also just, a lot of kits, uh, some of them will fold up a, a a good sturdy plastic bag has a water source so either way it works just depends on what you want to do put both in what the heck so anyway uh i think that's all i was going to say about adding to the uh to this kit or things i would change so uh, anyway that's just some more information on my thoughts or feelings on uh survival kits I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.